People often think of Christian morality as a kind of bargain in which God says, if you keep a lot of rules, I'll reward you. And if you don't, I'll do the other thing. I do not think that is the best way of looking at it. I would much rather say that every time you make a choice, you are turning the central part of you, the part of you that chooses, into something a little different from what it was before, and taking your life as a whole with all your innumerable choices. All your life long you are slowly turning this central thing either into a heavenly creature or into a hellish creature either into a creature that is in harmony with God and with other creatures and with itself, or else into one that is in a state of war and hatred with God and with its fellow creatures and with itself. To be the one kind of creature is heaven. That is, it is joy and peace and knowledge and power. To be the other means madness, horror, idiocy, rage, impotence, and eternal loneliness. Each of us at each moment is progressing to the one state or the other. I mean, that's why I'm here. Uh, the next few years uh, in these students' lives are just so critically important in terms of decision making. They're going to decide where to go to school, what career to pursue, whom to marry, when to start a family, who God is, what the purpose of their life is. And getting the answers to those questions right is so critically important to the way that the rest of their life is going to go. As a coach, I've had the opportunity to travel around almost all three and four A schools in the state of Alaska. So I've seen a lot of different schools, a lot of different hallways, even been in classrooms with coaches that have students. So I've seen interaction. And uh, Grace is special. It really is. There's a feeling here when you're at Grace that students care for each other. Bigger kids are giving them high fives and the big kids are excited to see the little kids and the little kids are excited to see the big kids and just the love that they show one another and the love that the teachers show the students and the fact that they go out of their way to teach them and to invest as much as they can. We don't have to stop our education at just a cognitive level or even at sports and at an athletic level. We get to nurture their spirits. And so if they choose to take advantage of the opportunity given here, their spirits are taught and nurtured in Christ until they're out on the world on their own. And so they can leave so prepared for whatever God has for them because they've been taught as a whole person. Yeah, well Grace offers so many things that other schools don't, public schools especially, because Grace offers to Christian families that spiritual leadership and guidance that can partner with parents and the church. Um, and we don't, we don't fill the gap, we support what's already being done um, by not just our Bible curriculum, but that mentorship that happens in being in fellowship together. My life would literally look absolutely nothing like it was without the input and the guidance and influence that Mr. T has given me in my life. Like, I would come in here and he would just kind of take it upon himself to just smash Bible verses into my head over and over and over again until I started getting them and, and actually realizing what they meant and things like that. And I know God has purpose for me that I hope every student that comes in my classroom knows that they're unique and that my classroom's not the same when they're not here. That God has purpose for us to meet in here to learn social studies. But social studies is just the ve vehicle to learn all the special things God has for us. That we then have skills to deal with adversity or loss or frustration or forgiveness or all these different issues that I, I really know we here at Grace can talk about openly. Um, and use God word, God's Word to help lay foundation for students that will be so impactful in their lives beyond. I would come in here, I'd be having a really crummy day. He'd, he wouldn't tell me that, oh no, like your day is going to get better. It, I don't think he ever said that once. He would say, this is an opportunity for you to get closer to God. Not only are they taught as a whole person, but they have so many opportunities to practice what they learn. I love that our sports teams interact with all the other schools around this state. I love that relationships are built through sports. I love that they get to go on mission trips around this state, around the world. If they take advantage of all those opportunities to 
put into practice what they are being taught and how they are being nurtured here, they will be rock solid ready for what God has for them in their future. We get to mainstream the worldview of Christ instead of the worldview of um, culture. And that's a huge difference because I think that outside of grace, even um, well-intentioned teachers don't have the freedom, even the Christian well-intentioned teachers don't have the freedom to live out the Christian faith as loudly as we get to at Grace. I kind of had a falling out with one of my friends um, and I felt very betrayed and very angry and very bitter. Um, and I think that that if Mr. T hadn't have been there, then that bitterness and that anger would have perpetuated. But what he did for me and what he showed me was that there, there was an opportunity for me to reflect Jesus' forgiveness of us for, for that person. And that there was a, a way for me to experience and understand the gospel in a way that I would not have been able to before. If my youngest daughter didn't have the opportunity to, to go to Grace 7 through 12, I don't know where she would be spiritually right now. We're Christians, I'm sure she would be fine. But her faith grew here in six years in a way that her mom and I couldn't have replicated on her own. Without the teachers and staff and fellow students in this school, encouraging, um, calling out, showing, modeling, she wouldn't be where she's at. As a teacher, I come to class every day and I, I don't deal with issues that I didn't, where I taught before. Students are respectful, they're hardworking, they're committed. There really is a peer pressure to do well. And I see that in the classroom and it builds a stronger classroom. I can work more with the students because they're coming prepared each day, they're doing their work, and I know that's because they're being encouraged from their home. The community, you, you walk throughout the Anchorage community and when you hear Grace Christian, they talk about positive things that happen because of the school. Our sports teams, the way they treat other sports teams when they travel, and that's a theme for the whole school. We are committed to God at this school. We're committed to uh, uh, His ideals. And I mean, without that and without that permeating throughout our community, uh, it wouldn't be the same, Anchorage wouldn't be the same without Grace being here. And so at the end of the day, I mean, we do all we can. I mean, in this building there is an incredible level of teacher investment, but it's not just that. Um, and there is an amazing culture that's created by the parents at home uh, and demonstrated by the students, but it's not just that. I mean, there are so many factors that contribute to the environment that we have here in this building, and I've never been a part of anything like it anywhere in my life. Uh, but at the end of the day, it still comes down to the students. It comes down uh, to the decisions they make and what they choose. Today, I choose love. Today, I choose respect. Today, I choose to forgive. Today, I choose to serve. Today, I choose to work hard. Today, I choose to love others. Today, I choose to live differently. Today, I choose to follow Christ. Today, I choose to make a difference. Today, I choose to do the right thing. Today, I choose to love my neighbor. Today, I choose love. Today, I choose joy. Today, I choose peace. Today, I choose peace and patience. Today, I choose kindness. Today, I choose goodness. Today, I choose gentleness. Today, I choose faithfulness. Today, I choose self-control. So, how about you? What do you choose?